Okay, great. Look, it is now six o'clock. Good afternoon, everybody. Tuesday, 20th September, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. in the UK. Uh, just a quick legal thing I've got to say. Uh, Gordon know, Bennett knows why, but uh, this is the case these days. Uh, this webinar is for information and education only. Nothing said, not said, or implied is a solicitation to buy or sell, to trade or not to trade in any vehicle whatsoever. And please be aware that I am not a registered financial advisor. There we go. Got that out of the way. Folks, I want you to bear with me a bit as I'm not too technically minded when it comes to these webinars. Um, last week, as I said just a few moments ago, I managed to freeze my screen for about 15 minutes. So I hope that won't happen today. And uh, just so that I can actually keep my mind pretty much on what I'm doing today, I'm going to leave taking questions to the end. I hope that is OK. Um, I don't want to go on for too long, take up too much of your time, so I'm going to briefly introduce myself and then we're going to have a look at a few charts. Um, silver, like you've got in front of you, the Dow, uh, Kiwi CAD, whatever. And what I'm going to do is try and show how the methodology that I use can make them readable and accessible to anyone, you know, whether you're a complete novice, whether you're an experienced trader. And then finally, I'm going to talk very briefly about my new website, which is now live. It's been running for about a week. Um, I do recognize a few names out there, so welcome to you guys uh, and girls, in fact. Welcome to you nice people. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ben Drage, and as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm a Brit, and I'm based in the UK. A uh, little bit of history, I took law degree at Oxford University, did my bar finals exams before changing direction in the early 1980s, starting work in the City of London in the money markets, and I spent from 82 to 98 there uh, in some specialist boutique firms concentrating on what was then the nascent uh, interest rate swap market. And then in 98, I decided to leave in order to concentrate on my personal trading. And that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing since then. Right, got that out of the way. Let's have a look at some charts. And I'm going to try and explain what I mean about uh, decoding the markets. Uh, let's just bear in mind also that we have got quite a big uh, central bank week here at the moment, uh, coming through this week. Uh, bank of Japan tonight, FOMC tomorrow. So it's either going to be completely dead or it's going to go madly volatile or both. So just a little bit of care with uh, supports and resistances that I'm going to point out to you today. Okay, great. Silver on a daily basis. What you have in front of you is a daily chart of silver. And I assume that it makes sense to most people. And I say that because uh, pretty much you can see, you know, supports across here, supports here, you can see resistances. Okay. In short, it's the kind of chart that I hope you could trade with confidence. And the reason for that is because you can see the pattern in the chart. Our brains are wired to respond to patterns. So when we see a pattern in a chart, we can feel comfortable with it. What I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to take this back to a bear chart. This, this is exactly the same chart, but with no lines uh, drawn on it. Um, and what I'm going to do, just very briefly, is I'm going to start annotating it, you know, like probably most people would do that don't look, that, that don't use median line analysis. You know, you've got a horizontal line you might put across there, you might put a diagonal across there, um, and then we start to use indicators. I mean, has, has anybody got any particular favorite indicators? You know, I know I said, didn't say, I said I wouldn't take questions, but just, just pump them in. Um, moving average, yeah, let's just add a moving average. There you go. RSI, another nice one. Yeah, that's down at the bottom. Bolly bands. Now, there's nothing like a bolly band to mess up a chart. Here we go. Bolly bands on it. Yuck. OK, look, I'm not going to go through all of them. That, that is enough. Um, just remember one thing. All these indicators, whether it's an RSI, bolly band, moving average, they confuse. And all they are is they're actually derivatives of price. OK, they take their nature. They're, they're, what, what they basically do is they take price and they tell you something about price. OK, I don't think you need to do that. I think what you need to do is just take price and look at price. So what I'm going to do is go back to this chart that I've, I've just put a median line on a pitchfork. I've gone A, B, C, and all of a sudden what I'm doing um, 
is just showing the path of price. There's nothing magical about a pitchfork. All it's doing is putting the movements of price into a context. It's giving them a framework, and in that framework, we can start looking for our high probability areas of support and resistance. Um, but, you know, we don't just look at the median line, the lower parallel, the upper parallel, the quartiles. We can go a little bit deeper than that. What, what we can do is we can take uh, what we call sliding parallels, which are lines which are in the angle of the fork, a little bit like this. So you can hear from, see here from this resistance, you've got resistance across here, resistance there, all of a sudden support, and price goes whizzing up into the stratosphere. And just underneath the lower parallel as well, if we just draw a line down there, this support here, look, it catches this. It just helps us, it adds to the, the texture, the nuance that we've got in the fork. And also, I mean, some people, I guess if you're not familiar with forks, if you're not familiar with the way I work, um, and some other people as well, you'll notice that price has moved above the top of the fork. Some people that use pitchforks will immediately discard that fork. I don't really work like that. What I look to do is add outer quartiles, warning lines. This is an outer quartile. This is a warning line, equidistant from the upper parallel, as the upper parallel is from the median line. And all that's doing is just helping us frame the path of price, the way that the pitchfork, the, the, the way price is moving within the pitchfork. So let me say it once again, whether you're actually a newbie or a seasoned professional, when you can see the pattern in a chart, you can trade that chart with much more confidence. Now I'm going to move on from this. You must be sick of this chart at the moment. What I'm going to go and look at in on a smaller time frame, because this is a daily chart, let's look at this uh, move down from the high up here. And I'm going to go and look at that on a 240 minute chart. Again, all I've done here is I've just taken off the uh, all my annotations on it. OK, so what, what would you normally do? What would people normally do? Well, they'd probably draw some kind of line like that. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Yeah, can live with that. Again, a horizontal. This is probably going to be more interesting. Yeah, that is more interesting. Support, support, support there. Good support. We came down and then we're underneath it and resistance. I like all that. But I can give you an awful lot more nuance if we go and look at what's happening with a pitchfork. So I'm going to go high, down to a low, up to a high again. And because I like pitchforks that go down to be red. I'm going to color it red. And I just quickly want to go through what we're seeing here. Price starts to move down, hits the median line, moves up again. We start getting resistance along this upper parallel. Price falls again. Just look what happens. We go underneath the median line there. And I'm just going to draw in one of those sliding parallels. Whoops. One of those sliding parallels. Support, support, support. And price moves to the upside. It goes above the pitchfork. Very simply, what we're going to do here, we're going to go and put a warning line, equidistant, it hits resistance, it comes back down. And this, I think, is the, 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 the interesting part, the way that resistance along this upper parallel now becomes support. Okay, If you're talking about the horizontal, when resistance becomes support, that's bullish. In the same way, you're talking about the angle of the fork, resistance along here becomes support. That's beginning to, to look a little bit bullish. And what I'm going to do, let me just change this to a lighter color so you can see it a little bit better. What I'm going to do, when I start seeing uh, resistance breaching to the upside, and I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here because at the moment resistance is this warning line. So I don't think the price is moving to the upside until we get that. But what I'm going to look to do is I'm just going to take a, a fork from this low here, A, B, C, and just change that like that. And immediately, does that make a little bit of sense what's happening here? We've got a move up pretty much to the to, to the median line. It's not perfect. We've come back down. We tagged this pretty exactly. But we can go a little bit deeper than that. What we can do is just draw in a sliding parallel across there. Let me just make this a little bit tighter. Here you can see. Sliding parallel from that low. And as you can see, look, we're beginning to pick up support, support, support. And again, a little bit of uh, resistance that we can see up above. We can just move these, th this line across here. Put that in there. And you can see we're, getting, we're beginning to get more and more subtlety.
I hope that makes a bit of sense. Now, I'm just going to mute myself for a second and have a slurp of water. Bear with me a tick. OK, I'm back with you. I assure you it was water as well. Um, great. I, I hope that's, that's just little bits of uh, showing you how, how we can actually construct charts across different time frames and, uh, and and hopefully kind of work you know from one to another um, working through the charts working across the time frames to try and show the kind of supports the resistances that we're looking at for example you know let, let me just look at this uh, low here on 28th of August if I go back to the chart we've got you know the end of August 28th of August that's that low there and how did we know that that was likely to be, whoops, the C point, the low of the fork, or there was a fair chance it would be? Because going back here, we're at the median line. We've got support at the median line. And just one other thing on this chart before we move on, because you're probably sick and tired of uh, silver by this stage. Um, support along the median line is something we've been looking at in, the members have been looking at, we watched resistance hit the upper parallel here. We fell all the way back and we've been talking about support. Where did we find support? I mean, I can go in as you know, close as you want to this. That is pretty much as precise support as I think you could ever find. So just to give you a little look, even on the daily chart, we're finding pretty reasonable uh, levels of support and resistance on the uh, uh, using median line analysis. OK, let's move on going to go and look at the Dow. Similar kind of situation. This is the Dow on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, it's been going sideways pretty much. Most people would probably be drawing these lines, would be looking at resistance, becomes a little bit of support, looks like a breakout, looks like a breakout. And we've dipped down here to the downside. Well, again, by using median line analysis, we can get an awful lot more nuance, a lot more information out of the the price, the, the path of price. So again, I'm going from, from a low up to a high, down to a low again. And I guess even a complete novice would probably understand what's going on here. We've got resistance up here at the median line of the fork. We've got support down at the lower parallel of the fork. So in the last few days, when we saw uh, price really start dipping very, very strongly, the Dow came down. Where were we going to look for support? We were going to look along the, the lower parallel here. And in fact, this bar, which hit it, there was something like a 450 point bar there. So, so that was a really significant move to the upside. But again, that's not all we can do. You know, we, we, we're looking for nuance. We're looking, even though this is a daily chart, to just try and get a little bit more uh, out of it. So again, what I'm going to do is put in a sliding parallel. You can see what's happened here. Price originally hit the median line, came back down, came back down to the lower parallel, and it's started moving to the upside. It hasn't got as far as the median line. If it was going to be as strong within the fork, it would be up here at nine, just over 19,000. But it hasn't done that. So, so what we've done is we've just noticed a lowering of resistance. Admittedly, in terms of the vertical, in, sorry, in terms of the horizontal, you're a little bit higher. But in terms of what's actually going on in the fork, the supports, the resistances here, we're seeing a lowered resistance. So effectively, resistance that was here is now here and here. And when price moved up, this was the first place that we were looking to see if it became resistance again. And again, prices dipped back down. But we can also do it in terms of support. Look, you've got you've got a spike bar down here back in, in February. And we drew the, if we draw this in, you can see support there support there, support once again, and support here. And what I've been saying for a few days is if price starts dipping beneath this, this, this green sliding parallel, if price starts to find resistance along here, that's going to be quite worrying. And look what's happened. I mean, even though we got, uh, e even when the Dow moved up 450 points, it didn't get close to this sliding parallel. Okay, it really didn't. Um, what are we looking at now? We're looking to see if support can now hold at the lower parallel because what effectively is happening is resistance is lowered from here to here and now down to here. So it, even though in a horizontal, it hasn't changed an awful lot in terms of the fork, in terms of the nuances of what it's telling us, price is moving to the downside. So 
the levels that I'm looking at at the moment, I guess most people are going to be looking to see if this horizontal across here from this high, if that provides continued support, or sorry, if that provides resistance, if price moves up 18.329, if it gets above that, that I think is what they're going to be looking for. Personally, I'm going to be looking a little bit higher. I'm going to be looking up around about 18.490 or so, 18.500, let's say. If price can't get above that, it's still a bearish context to my mind. Great. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, I'm seeing a few questions coming in. As I said, I am going to push through questions um, and, and, and try and look at those at the end, if that's OK, people. Great. I'm going to go and look on uh, one more chart I wanted to go and have a look at. Um, this is KiwiCAD. A lot of people have been talking about this. Um, again, just give me a second. I just want to have a slurp of water. Okay, back with you again. Right, this is the Kiwi Cat. This is on a weekly basis. This is going back to uh, 2007, and uh, I've I've seen you know in the Twitterverse, um, a few websites, people have been talking about you know massive head and shoulders breakout here. We've got shoulder, head, shoulder, and we've got a neckline. And in fact. Today, it is literally, it is just trying to, to push above that. This is a weekly chart, though, all right? But, you know, we can do an awful lot better than that. We, we, can, we can look with, again, I use the word nuance, a lot more of what's been happening. You know, people are, are beginning to talk about a breakout at 96.50, right? I'm going to draw a pitchfork for you. Going back down here, 2006, A, B, See, we're already trying to put things in a little bit of context here. Okay, how do we know it's working? Well, look at this high here that I'm just drawing a line off. Resistance, resistance. And again, I'm just going to clone this line. Let's go down beneath the... Uh, oh, if I can, it's not working. Great, just what we need. Here we go. Let's put another line there. OK, this has been working very well. Most people have been talking about the breakout up here, 96.50. I've been following it since down here at 87. All right, that's that's a, I don't know, 900 points already. I wouldn't say it's, it's in the bag because this is the market I've been in and out of. But look, the way we're looking at things, rather than just looking at it in terms of a breakout of a horizontal and a possible head and shoulders here. Because we're looking at the path of price, we can see that price has been moving in this line for the last four or five years. We can see that when we start getting support down here and down here, that we've got the potential for a really good move up. And I mean, if you look from, from the lows here, what were we? 86.98, call it 8,700. The low down here, 86. You know, this is this is... Maybe a 100-point stop. You might look at that in a weekly chart. I don't know. We could go down and look at it in terms of 240 or something like that. Um, we're moving. So, so you know, th this, 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 is, this is the kind of thing that, that we're trying to look at using median line analysis. Um, okay, I've gone through about 20 minutes. That, that's a quick spin through what I hope are some quite interesting charts. Um, what I quickly like to do let's go back to the silver daily um i hope that, that, that for some of you that are more used to uh, what i call the derivatives like the lagging indicators like rsi or macd it might have been a bit of an eye opener as, as to how we can project forward to try to find likely areas of support and resistance and that really is what Forex analytics is all about high probability low risk entries and exits because as I said earlier, once you can put a pattern on, to, on top of a chart, you can understand that chart. And in turn, when you can understand it, you can successfully trade that. OK, here's a little bit I want to talk about uh, Forex analytics a little bit. So what, you know, what do we look to do? We have two daily services, metals analysis and market analysis. And as it says on the tin, I guess the, the Brits amongst you would get that reference there. As it says on the tin, metals looks at precious metals, not just in dollars, but also in other currencies. And we also look at some of the miners. We look at platinum. We look at palladium. Um, market analysis includes everything you get in the metals analysis, but it also covers the indices. It covers commodities. It also covers 
forex currencies. But also, like I've just shown with the KiwiCAD, it also it, it covers non-dollar pairs. And some of them, for example, sterling yen, um, that, that's been worth something like 7,000 points in the last year. Um, actually, why, why, let's, let's show you that as well. Why not? Uh, where are we? Sterling yen. There you go. Look at this, the last year. We've gone from uh, 198 or so down to 128. I mean, absolutely massive move here. And even this this tiny little bounce that you see, 128 up to 143, you know, it's absolutely massive. You get huge moves in these pairs. So that's one of the other things that we look at in uh, market analysis. Both services have daily video analysis uh, that I put out before the London Open because I'm UK based. It's nice and easy for me. And what I try to do is highlight the moves and also the key areas to watch through the next session or so and also through the coming days. Uh, we've also got live chat rooms where you can post your own charts or analysis and also where I can comment or update during the day. Um, and we also have market analysis also has two live webinars each week where we can go through to key charts and focus in a bit more detail on what's happening and you know try and use those uh, for a little bit of an educational tone I guess something like that um, somebody's just flashed up at me go and have a look at natural gas national natural gas let me, let me just flip over and do that okay sorry this is something that, that I've been putting into uh, members over the last day or so okay natural gas I mean yeah, you, you can see what's happening here. Um, we've got a nice fork to the upside resistance. We looked at support down here. And what we've got is, if you look at this sliding parallel along here, it's not the, the world's greatest sliding parallel resistance. Support, support, support. The stepping up of support from here to here has had me talking to members about um, maybe breaking through the resistance that we're seeing up here. We've been watching for the last couple of days at uh, the median line there so it looks as though we are just pushing through that great thank you very much JC I do appreciate you pointing that out um, okay look um, I, I can't do these webinars for too long I, I do tend to rapidly run out of steam but I, but I hope I've given you some idea of what it is that I'm, I'm looking to do in basically trying to simplify the chart and also put the moves that we see into an understandable and also into uh, a more tradable context. Um, as I said earlier, you, you see a pattern, you understand a pattern, you trade a pattern. And while I think the methodology has great benefits for traders and investors, um, I do appreciate that for many of you, it is a little bit of a step out of the mainstream. Um, but there's a quote I really like, and it says, if you want to have a better performance than the crowd, then you have to do things differently from the crowd. And I certainly think median line analysis is a very different kind of approach to trading. Uh, if you're intrigued by it, if you want to find out a bit more about it, well, you know, please go and visit the website www.forex-analytics.com, um, and you'll see there that I've got uh, a special introductory offer on the go. There are also some more video, videos on the website, so you know, have a look around there. And you can always contact me. You can always send me a, an email. I'm happy to respond. Support at forex-analytics.com. Alternatively, uh, just message me on Twitter, Forex Analytics One. That's the number one. Okay, um, guys, that was pretty much all I really wanted to say. Um, obviously, there are a few questions coming in. Um, there are somebody saying I. Yeah, I posted about uh, copper. Could I go and look at that? Sure. Uh, I posted this, I think, to Twitter a few times. So let's just go and have a look at copper. Um, what we're seeing. What do you? What? Can I? Can I? What's the red? What's the red? What are the red lines? Okay. Let me go out a little bit more. Um, this is a daily chart of copper. Copper has been in a downtrend for. God, it seems like ever. 2011. Okay. Uh, been following it to the downside using this fork. Just in the last few days, weeks, months, really, I guess, we've seen a little bit of a stepping up of support. Um, the, the, the support I was seeing was in the line of the red fork, this green sliding parallel, support there, support there. All of a sudden, through spring, through April, May, June, we start seeing support coming up here to the quartile, a little bit higher, up at the quartile, up at the quartile, up at the quartile. So when we start 
seeing the beginnings of a change of trend, what we look to do is we look to uh, to draw a fork. Let me let me just get rid of this and show you what uh, originally might have done. Originally, you know what we do, you go from a low to a high to a low, and I guess I was I, th I think I was probably looking at this fork. Um, Nothing, by the way, when you look at pitchforks, when you look at median lines, nothing is guaranteed unless it is validated. OK, by that, I mean you would not suddenly jump in and buy this the moment it hits this line. OK, you would not buy that immediately. You look to see what's happening. As you can see, didn't really work. We, we started moving underneath the fork. So what do we do? We change the nature of the fork. We move it into what is called a modified shift. And that is the fork that actually has worked really, really nicely. Um, what we've seen here, what we've been looking at in recent times, is the lower parallel support. Let me just get this absolutely in line, because these forks are incredibly... If you get something just a little bit out, there we go. I'm on this low here as my, as my A point. Um, if you get these little things out, it throws the whole angle that you're looking at quite, quite badly. OK, so... Watching this fork, we came down, we saw a little bit of a bounce just above it. It came back down, it touched the fork absolutely to the T. Again, let me, let me just try and go in a bit. I mean, that's a daily chart. I, I can't get it any tighter than that. That is, to my mind, perfect. Um, and price started to move up pretty strongly, 206.15. We've reached highs now of 217. So that's a, a pretty considerable point. What are we also looking at? We're looking at what's going on in the red fork. Uh, you remember the, the, the sliding parallel we had back here, the quartile we had back here. We stepped up again. Let me just highlight this. Support becomes support. We started moving up. We're looking at what's going on in the red fork. OK, I drew a high off there. When we had this big move up, you know, people were probably saying, ah, you know, we're going to 240, 250, no stopping us. Or would they maybe be looking at highs, I don't know, a horizontal off this high here? We're going to 227.68. Not immediately. What we did, we moved up. We ran a sliding parallel off this. Until we actually got a reaction, all this was was a spike with a line off it. And what's happened? Price has moved up. It's hit it. It hit it at 216.60. We fell away to 13.90. So that's not a bad move to the downside. It looks as though we are now pushing to the upside. Ensign, because the market has just closed, has given me a second bar there. So I'm just going to get rid of that. OK, it looks to me as though we're just above it. That looks to me as though we might push higher. Where am I going to look next? I'm probably going to draw a sliding parallel off those highs. Again, at the moment, these are, these are spikes with a line off them. There's no reason to think that that is actually going to be a resistance yet. I am going to look at the median line. I'm sorry, at the up, the red upper parallel here as well. Does that explain a little bit more what I was looking at in terms of uh, in terms of that? Great. Okay. Um, I always get this question: What are we what, what are we charting with? We are charting with Ensign 10. We're using e-signal feeds. Um, yeah, I mean, just I, fi I find them very good. I've used them for, God, I, bet, I guess about 10 years now. Um, they're great. And I don't get paid to say that, OK? They charge me a fortune to use them, but uh, I, I think they're the best I've found. All right, fine. Um, another question. Wendy says, can I have a look at the DAX? DAX 60. Uh, yeah, I posted that into... Onto Twitter again, I think, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I was I was talking to somebody about this earlier today. Uh, that is the DAX 60. That is naked. Okay, that's got nothing on it. Uh, let, let's let's just build the chart up again. What would we do? Um, we'd probably look at a horizontal. Okay, that doesn't work too badly. Uh, we'd probably look at another line across there. Okay, quite like that. Support, support becomes resistance. Yeah, not bad. Maybe another horizontal somewhere there. Yeah, you know, support, support. Not brilliant. OK. We'll put a fork in. Low. High. 
low. And I'm actually going to change this to uh, a shift. OK, this is a different type of fault that, that uh, we use. And if I remember correctly, what we've got on this is we've got, uh, hang on a second, we've got a lower parallel. Yeah, there we go. Right. I can get a lot more information. Again, we're back to nuance again, um, talking about what, what, what happens with uh, using the fork. Um, first thing, uh, moving everything, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's get this right before we start talking about it. OK, everything in position. Right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a sliding parallel across here. Resistance, resistance. Beneath resistance, you can see what we're doing, OK? You can see support across here. That turns into resistance. That tells you support becoming resistance tells you what the market is doing. We get another set of supports here. One, two, three. We dip beneath. That becomes resistance. What we're doing is we're stepping down from the resistance up here and the support here. This becomes resistance. Down we go. Support becomes resistance. It's got a bit messy the last couple of days. What I was looking at here is to see if this area, this line, becomes a little bit of support. You know, again, this, this is a 60-minute chart. Um, we're allowed a little bit of leeway. Not too much. A little bit, maybe. Uh, what, all, all, all I'm saying is that looking at it like that, it's just an awful lot easier than getting rid of it and looking at it like that and just wondering precisely what is going to happen on that. Does that make a bit of sense to you, Wendy? Is that all right? Great, yeah, OK. Um, another commodity, Mark is saying, what what am I looking at at the moment on commodities? Um, Mark, I don't want to be unfair to, to to my members, as you can understand. I know what I'll look at. I know what I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to go and have a look. We had, we had a really nice move last week in sugar, which is SB. Yeah. This is the sugar future. Um, and we talked about this, I think it was last Thursday, I was uh, I had a members webinar, and this was one of the charts that I pointed out to people. Um, what I was liking, what, what, what I really thought was interesting was the fact that we were getting support along the quartile here, 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 here. Um, quite a lot of nice support. There was horizontal resistance just above it. And I think what I, what I was saying to people was, look, as long as this quartile remains as support, as long as price continues to move up here, the chances are that we're going to take out horizontal resistance that everyone is watching. OK, what happened? This was Thursday. Friday opens and the market shoots to the upside. I mean, that is, uh, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to claim all the all the uh, glory on that one. That was a, that, that was a little bit of a lucky call. But, you know, I, I I'm pretty sure that uh, a couple of people got involved in that, should we say. Um, so what, what have we seen? We've seen a move from 20 up to 23, basically, which is which is a fantastic move uh, for sugar, and it it literally just exploded. Again, if we get rid of the chart on that, you know, how did you know this was going to happen? You know, you you just could not tell. Uh, I'm going to undo the delete, put the the fork back on. You know, this this is giving you the information that you need. It's giving you the validation from the lower parallel support here. It's giving you the action that you're getting along the median line support support resistance here bit more resistance you're getting all the quartile support and then bang up we go and you know this this does work on on big one on pretty big charts as well this this is soy um soybeans does anyone ever anyone ever traded soybeans yeah they are difficult they're they're one of those aren't they um okay so so what i've been doing is i've been i've been looking at this chart i mean it, it's you know, the thing I like is lower parallel support, lower parallel support, and then it just went astronomical. You know, we, we moved from 85 and a half to 121.07. I mean, that's that, that's madness. That, that is a huge move. And we dropped precipitously. We kept dropping. We kept dropping. What did I notice over the, the last couple of days? The fact that we got in the last couple of uh, months, really, or really, no, last couple of weeks, since the beginning of September, look, We've had resistance on the quartile. We had resistance on the quartile. We got a nice bounce. And it's, I guess it's really pretty much the first time that we've seen anything much happening since, you know, this quartile up here. We got a bounce, 
moved higher. Price came back down. We had two or three days. It kind of settled at the quartile. Again, I think I pointed this out to, to members, and prices started shifting to the upside again. That, that, that's one that I've, another one that I have actually been following. The, the red uh, lines to the downside, I just ran a line, action reaction line, off that high to that high. And what I was just noticing was the fact we had support there. And look, right now we're at resistance. And just running the same line off that low just captures all those lows there. And again, I just cloned the distance here. And it pretty much captures the high. So, you know, that, that's that's a reasonable line, I think, to watch. Let's look and see what happens now with soy hitting this line around about 9940, just under 100. Um, let's see what happens on that. Is that all right? Yeah, OK. Can I look at palladium? Yeah, no problem. Palladium, um, that's another one of our the ones that we cover in the metal service. Um, not a lot of people look at this chart but uh, or look at uh, palladium but it's been running really nicely um again not too concerned by the fact that we dipped outside the fork here you know the fact is we're still tending to move to the upside in the line of the fork what i do particularly like about it what really um appealed to me it was the early lower parallel touch the fact we move up the fact that these two highs are very much in line that tells me that there is some validation um, that, that it's worth looking at. What have we been looking at in the last few days in the service? Well, again, we've had a sliding parallel off, off this low here, resistance there, kind of messy across here, but the fact that we had, you know, three bars just nestled on that, you know, even though this is a daily chart, we've had three bars nestled on that, and then we've had a strong day to the upside, okay? Followed by another strong day, a little bit of a down day today, you know, we'll continue to monitor that. Guys, I, I really am running out of steam here. Um, I'm going to leave it at that if that uh, is all right. As I say, I don't want to take up too much of your time. If you are interested in what I've been showing you, if it is, uh, you think, something that's going to benefit you, either in terms of education, either in terms of your trading, please go and have a look at the site, www.forex-analytics.com. And as I say, you can always email me, support at forex analytics Com. I will be sending you a copy of this recording, assuming that I have managed to record it without any trouble this time. Um, I'm, I'm going to email you that out uh, in a couple of hours' time when I've got everything ready. Um, members, that it will also be available on the calendar uh, around about the same time. So there you go. I hope that has been helpful. I hope it has been of use. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Um, and as I say, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks very much indeed. Bye.